You said that the dog was at your house last, and then it got lost, right? Yeah. Well, I'll radio <laughs> some of my friends. We'll, t we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll keep a lookout. We'll find the dog, and we'll bring him back to you. Oh, okay. That's a police officer's promise. Axel Omega, Officer Axel Omega, is a police officer um, in the city. He um, prides himself on being the best cop he can be. And um, he is all about um, being honest. That's, that's his key virtue, is being honest as possible. All the while, his insecurity um, is looking weak, um, not only around others, but to himself. He's very critical of himself. Um, main tropes of Axel Omega's character are, uh, mission comes first. So regardless of what may happen, um, for the most part, if, um, whatever is the main mission, whatever has to be done, that, whatever, that takes priority. Um, so Axel is always conscious of directing the focus back towards the main mission. Uh, his other trope is no man left behind, which, um, means that if, Things go down. They got to get out of there, or, or they're, 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 it calls for somebody to be group to be split up. He, he's against that. He wants to make sure everybody stays together. Um, if there's somebody left behind, if they're having to hustle out of a uh, scenario, he always makes sure that he can uh, get that person and bring him along with them. Um, and the third and final trope: uh, always be prepared. Um, that kind of ties in with his role as a police officer. Uh, that he always wants to make sure that he has the tools necessary for doing what he has to do, his job, um, and never be in a scenario where he is like, oh crap, I, I don't have the means to do what I gotta do, um, which kind of ties into his old looking weak thing. Officer Omega is the fighter of the group. He is always focused and honed in on the mission at hand Whenever things go wrong, he never loses his cool, stays calm, and focused in on what needs to be done. Other members of the party kind of are inspired by that and also feel more focused and calm in bad situations. And so they kind of lean on him a little bit in those circumstances. So how does Axel Omega feel about the other members of the party? Jack French who was a bit of the couch surfer. He initially didn't like Jack French too much, thought he was a freeloader, slacker, lazy, just an annoyance. But later, Axel Omega learns to trust Jack and certain uh, dire needs where Jack had to just tell Axel, hey, you got to trust me on this. And Axel hesitantly does, later finds out that Jack was right all along. So there is as an actual uh, trust uh, build up there. Levi Waterhouse started off as somebody that was really that uh, Axel Omega didn't really care too much for either way. Later, when Levi learned or developed his superpowers, Axel then really started to get annoyed by Levi Waterhouse through the different uh, scenarios uh, that occurred. So right now, Axel Omega doesn't quite care for. Levi Waterhouse. He doesn't necessarily hate him, but he's just kind of annoyed and frustrated with him. Tanya, he got along with Tanya at the start uh, to a degree, even though she would be very questioning and, and curious. And later, Axel learned to look past that and now gets along with Tanya pretty well. They have this established sort of... Um, trust between each other uh tanya and axel tend to actually kind of get each other in some sort of way axel omega's power is called electric thunder and basically it is a huge shockwave of 
power, force, energy exploding around him. He initially acquired this power and thought and kind of dismissed it as some sort of crazy stuff that's happened when he got knocked out and experienced all these bizarre things and doesn't really accept it until a situation ar arised where he felt hopeless uh, in the sense that there, there was like a last resort sort of thing. He would be fighting to the best of his ability. It would get down to the wire, death or life moment, and he draws in this sort of pent-up angst and regret and all the things he experienced in his past uh, and failure and just explodes into this burst of energy. And he only uses it in a last resort sort of way. He he won't he recognizes it, he recognizes it as a as a power that was gifted to him somehow or another. Um, and he will only use it in situations that are dire. Oh, Shazam! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Axel's father, Vincent, Vincent Omega, uh, was a cop himself and a legendary cop. Everybody knew uh, Vinny Omega. He was probably the best police officer around. Vinny Omega uh, pulled over somebody for a basic traffic speeding violation when, out of nowhere, he was tragically hit by another person driving rather recklessly and was killed instantly. Afterwards, Axel decided that he should carry on his father's legacy as a police officer and join the police force himself, and he did. Little did he know that there would be so much more to being a police officer than he'd realize. Later, his superior assigned him a partner to kind of take under his wing and show the ropes and all that good stuff. And this police officer was named Officer Roland. And she was fairly young. She was about in her early 20s. Axel Omega is about mid 20s right now. And they worked together for a very long time. They were excellent together. They formed a strong uh, uh, friendship and bond as police officers. And one point, the same superior, the same boss of uh, Officer Omega, um, said that they had to go and perform a drug bust operation um, at this one local bar. And so they did. They went that way, but they didn't realize how serious of a drug bust this was. They were just told that it was a basic, regular old drug bust. Uh, when they got there, um, they were surrounded by a bunch of nasty thugs um, who worked under this guy called Antonio Andalini, who, to, to, not to their knowledge, was the biggest drug lord in the city. There was a big shootout, um, and Axel was barely able to get out alive on his own, but with, to, to, he, he couldn't help but get separated from Officer Roland, who was actually captured by... Antonio Andalini himself. Axel went back to his superior to tell him about this. And unfortunately, the, uh, his boss said, hey, that's just the way it goes. Um, Roland's probably dead by now and probably better than what's happened to previous officers. And Axel was like, what do you mean? He said, Andalini loves capturing um, officers and tortures them. He has this thing for, he, he hates police officers. And Axel's like, well, you know, why, why did you send us to this? Not even knowing all this, knowing that he, he likes capturing and torturing police officers. And he says, well, if I told you, you, you would probably be opposed to doing it in the first place. You know, you're just another cog in the wheel. It's, it's, it's your job. And we're not, going to, we're not going to send anybody else back to get uh, Officer Roland. Well, Axel was not having any of that. He's like, screw that. I'm going in on my own. You can take my badge if you like. I'm going in to rescue Officer Roland. So that night, he goes to the bar. And to, much to his surprise, it's pretty dark and emptied out. Nobody's there. He goes to the next floor and finds Officer Roland tied up to a chair with 
a single light shining on her. And Axel doesn't see anything suspicious about this. But again, he's a little bit of an inexperienced cop. And he goes to untie Officer Roland. And that's when he's jumped by a bunch of thugs out of the darkness there. And they hold him. And Tony Andalini comes out, stands behind Officer Roland with a knife in his hand and says, I got a message for you to send to your boss and slits Officer Roland's throat right in front of Axel Omega's eyes. Tony Andalini tells Officer Omega, go tell your boss to stay out of our business or more cops are going to get killed. And Axel Omega is pretty traumatized by all this. Um, later, in the, uh, during the wake for Officer Roland, Axel Omega goes, he, he feels pretty compelled to at least apologize to the family members of Officer Roland. He, he feels like it's his fault. And he finds the only family member that showed up, and her name is Cassie. He goes and talks to Cassie and says, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. You know, why Officer Roland died at, at my hands. I couldn't save her. And Cassie ends up telling um, Officer Omega uh, her story about how they're sisters. Um, and they live together, the only family they had. And now she's gone and Cassie is the only, Cassie is the only person left really. And um, Axel feels obliged to, to help Cassie whenever he can. Um, as far as simple things like doing things at, around uh, the, the house that both Cassie and her sister took care of. And they end up uh, forming a strong friendship that ended up turning into a marriage. After many years of being married together, Axel continues to, uh, he joins back into the police force um, and doesn't quite shake the guilt of Officer Roland's death and feels obliged to go it alone, not take any more partners. He refuses partners because he, he doesn't want the same thing to happen again. And he's more determined than ever. He wants to, he wants to be the best police officer that he can and hope to be as at least half as good as a police officer as his father was. If you don't have to sprint him, you can just fire him. I'm gonna run up to him and I'm gonna put the gun to his face and fucking blow his fucking brains out. 